name is Basma Zaberi and right now we are at a bachcha party at Punjab Charangi branch and with me we have Dr. Alina Nasir to help you out for oral hygiene routine for your kids. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? I am fine. Okay. Uh, Alina, we have received a lot of messages and queries regarding oral hygiene for the kids. You know, like it's the most important thing and it's really difficult for mothers Extremely. to, uh, you know, like obey their kids for oral hygiene. Yes. So please help us out with that. Do you have any like tips and tricks which are minimal and which can be done in daily routine as well? Well, for starters, uh, when we want to maintain our kids' oral hygiene, that we want to ensure that we are giving them positive reinforcement to keep their teeth healthy every single day. So for starters, if we're going to talk about giving them snacks throughout the day, which is apart from your lunch, dinner time, then we need to reduce the frequency of sugary snacks such as cookies and chips uh, throughout the day. And when we want to talk about their brushing, then we do want to encourage them to make it a little more fun for their kids. I'm talking to the moms here. Make dental, make dental hygiene more fun for them. So you can buy them fun-looking toothbrushes and tasty toothpastes, which are fluoride-free if they're less than one years old. And you can always encourage them to use it with you and teach them how to do it along with yourself when you're brushing your teeth every day. Make it more like fun rather than a task. And don't scare them against cavities. More like encourage them to avoid cavities and avoid eating uh, sugary foods throughout the day when it's not the time to eat them. Okay, what can we, uh, like how can we help the kids which are above one year age or they are between uh, like four to five years? So they usually don't, you know, like uh, focus on oral hygiene or they even uh, irritate their mothers while doing toothbrush and that and they do not follow the routine. So what's the way to handle them and to make them, uh, you know, realize the importance that they have to do it? Like, Well, for starters, if you want to get your child to cooperate with you and if they're at that uh, young and tender age of four and five, which is a very crucial age for your dental health because at the age of six, which is very close to the age of four and five, we start getting our permanent teeth. And if we are to develop teeth between the age of four and five, then it would more li most likely harm the, um, the growth of the permanent teeth inside the jaws. So when we want to talk about getting kids to cooperate, mm -hmm. right? then you want to first of all maybe show them photos of kids with bad teeth you know maybe it'll make them realize that this is not what they want tell them that if you eat this at this time it's not going to be good for you this can cause uh, a cavity or it can cause multiple lesions in your mouth or if you want them to see uh, if you want them to understand the importance of oral hygiene maybe show them the the, the real way of doing it you have to Encourage them since, uh, since they're at a young age. You have to encourage them for their oral hygiene from a very young age, even when they're one or two. Make it more like a fun task because getting kids to cooperate suddenly at the age of four and five when they're not in habit yeah. from before, it can get a bit difficult. Okay, so you're saying that we have to build a habit. You must build a habit, right? So when a baby is small, one year or less, mothers can help to keep their baby's teeth clean. They can use a simple washcloth, they can use a gauze, right? Because babies aren't going to learn at such a young age how to hold a brush and how to brush their teeth. I do know a few babies who like to hold two brushes and chew on them. So that's a good start. If they want to chew on them and have fun with them, that's fine. Because at least they're getting familiarized with the toothbrush. And there are uh, smaller toothbrushes that you can get which have rubber bristles, which are safe for your baby's gums and their teeth. So you can get them into the habit from an early age. Because getting someone to start something at a later age when they're less cooperative can be rather difficult. Okay. And then it can lead to a lot of future dental problems. Yeah. Okay, if a lot of mothers ask that their kids are really fond of, you know, like chocolates and these kind of stuff. So what's the way to like, uh, like what is the perfect amount that we can give and it cannot, you know, harm their teeth or anything like that? Or even if they take it in like more quantity, but still it doesn't, like oral hygiene saves them from any other thing. If well, they, if um, they have any other way to you know, like do both ways. Kids are not going to get their hands on chocolates and sweets and toffees if parents don't introduce them in the first place. Okay. So for starters, parents need to keep their kids away from such things, okay. right? Um, obviously, all kids are going to love unhealthy food. Everyone loves their chocolate. Even us adults love our chocolate, yeah. right? But we got it from somewhere. Kids don't know what chocolate is unless you feed it to them. Yeah. 
So chocolates and sweets are generally, I've noticed, uh, kept as a reward for kids for doing something good. And then if you give it to them, if you come here and you do this for me, I'll give you a sweet, I'll give you a toffee. Yeah. They think it's a reward, they think it's a positive reinforcement. And that's something that we need to work on, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you can treat them with their favorite toy. You have such a big store over here, come to Bacha Party. Yeah. Get them a nice toy as a gift. But don't encourage them with sweets and toffees, first of all. Yeah. So that gets them into that habit. They develop the taste for it. For example, when kids cry at, at a younger age that they don't want to eat their broccoli and their celery and their oats, that's because you haven't given them that habit from a young age. You tell them this is good for you and this is bad for you. Yeah. But you need to help a kid understand in a very positive manner okay. what is good and what is bad. If you want to give a treat to a child, don't make it in the form of a sweet or something unhealthy. Make it in the form of something that they can use or maybe something that they can enjoy playing with rather than eating and damaging their teeth. Okay, we have received a question, it's about that, is it necessary to brush twice a day or is it okay to do it just in the morning? It's absolutely not okay to brush once a day. It's necessary to brush twice a day, every day, for two whole minutes each time. Okay, so it's, it's two whole minutes is necessary? Two whole minutes each time. Okay, uh, the next question we have is, what are the common causes of bad odor? Causes of bad breath is usually the production of bacteria in the mouth, <coughs> lack of oral hygiene, and, and depositing of that bacteria on the back of your tongue. Okay. So even if you brush your teeth twice a day for two whole minutes each time, and if you're not brushing your tongue or the back of your tongue, and if you're not using a mouthwash or gargling, you're most likely going to end up with bad breath. Okay, so if uh, like if you are uh, like you know if you're getting a habit to the kids of uh, to brush your teeth twice a day, so do we have to go with the mouthwash as well? Kids should avoid uh, using mouthwash at a young age because there's a risk of them swallowing that and then there's a risk of excessive fluoride entering their system. So it's better to avoid mouthwash for young kids. Okay. Use a toothpaste in very small amounts, in a pea-sized amount, if the child is above one and a half or below, then use a fluoride-free toothpaste. Okay, so at what age uh, we can give mouthwash as well to the kids? I think it's safer to uh, give mouthwash to kids when they start to, to get their permanent teeth. Okay. And when they're adult enough, to understand that you have to rinse and spit. Okay. So I would say mainly when they're close to their adult, pre-adolescent pre ages, okay. right? Mainly yeah. focus on their oral hygiene, yeah. uh, their correct brushing timings, and frequency of brushing, and to avoid snacks throughout the day. That can keep their yeah, primary teeth in check, and then to obviously start off with mouthwash when they're older and more understanding and cooperative. Okay. Because chloride toxicity is a danger, for young kids who can ingest too much fluoride in one go. Okay, uh, what ordinary foods to, uh, to give to kids so they can consume less of candies? Something teeth friendly. Sugar-free gums. <laughs> you can give sugar-free gums. Uh, you can make uh, fruits and vegetables more fun for them, right? You can add um, uh, sugar and, sorry, you can add, what, what, what am I talking about? Uh, the sugars that we want to prevent the kids from eating. Mm -hmm. We don't want to add them to your fruit and we don't want to add them to their daily habit, right? So we're going to give them fruits, we want to give them vegetables. You can make it into a fun recipe. Mm -hmm. You can use uh, honey instead of sugar, use fruits instead of uh, processed foods, and uh, that would be the best way to go about it. Get them to start eating real sugars, okay. healthy sugars, fructose yeah. from your fruits. Okay, uh, next is, um, is it okay to use flavored toothpaste for right. kids? Flavored toothpaste are fine as long as they are fluoride free if they are less than one years old. And uh, flavored toothpaste are actually very good to get kids to start using toothpaste yeah. at a young age because they enjoy the taste and the flavor. Okay, next is uh, my son has uh, constipation. Any link between dental hygiene and constipation? There, up to this date, I haven't heard of any link of constipation and oral hygiene with each other. Maybe you can introduce fiber to your child's diet. Fiber always helps to relieve constipation. Um, maybe include oats in the child's diet, add some honey with oats, feed that to your child, give that child bananas, add it to the oats. It's really helpful for a kid to have proper fiber for constipation, but it usually is not linked to your dental hygiene. Okay, next question we have here is, um, I have heard coconut oil a pulling gets you rid of cleft and is good for healthy gums. Is it correct? Oil pulling is actually a very, very old way of uh, destroying bacteria in the mouth. It is a bit of a messy process and it does take time. You have to keep the oil in your mouth for at least 10 to 15 minutes and you have to keep swishing it around your mouth until it becomes like a white foam. 
It's not recommended that kids try this yeah. because it's more of an adult process to mm -hmm. avoid um, inflammation in the gums and yeah. to avoid bad breath. Mm -hmm. And it is a very known way to reduce bacteria in the mouth for adults, okay. not for okay. children. Yeah. Make sure it's only for adults, so don't try it with your kids. Unless your child is very um, understanding and can understand how to use oil in the mouth. Should be above 12, 13 years old. Okay. Uh, the next question we have is, uh, what is better for the kids, a uh, metal braces or Invisalign? Invisalign is generally recommended for adults because it requires a lot of patient cooperation, wearing the trays on time, wearing them frequently, and wearing them 22 hours a day. Children are a lot more careless and um, they may just lose the trays. You take them out when you eat, they can lose the trays. For kids, it's always recommended that we go for metallic braces, which are more in the control of the dentist and less in control of the patient. Okay. So next is, uh, can we use pacifier for one month old baby? We can use a pacifier for one month old babies, but then at some point you have to wean that child off a pacifier. Because then the child becomes dependent on the pacifier. I've seen babies even at the age of two years using pacifiers and uh, they cannot sleep or stop crying without it. So you okay, want so to ensure it's not harmful for a baby as such, it's more of a habit. Okay. So if a baby is used to using a pacifier non-stop throughout the day, every time a child is being fussy or cranky, parents tend to put a pacifier in their mouth. Okay. It develops the same thing as I was saying, positive reassurance, right? And negative reassurance. Mm -hmm. So the child looks at the pacifier as a pacifier to their mood, to their crankiness, to their to their fit, or whatever it is that's upsetting them. Pacifiers are generally not advised for too prolonged period of time because then children have a hard time letting it go. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is my baby is three months old. Her mouth got white spots. How do I clean her mouth? You can use gauze. You can soak it in uh, uh, salt water, and you can use a clean gauze, or you can use um, wipes, wet wipes which are safe for babies, use them in the mouth and clean those spots out. Or if these spots are actual ulcers or lesions, then please go see your child's dentist, pediatric uh, uh, dentist, so that you can clearly diagnose what the problem could be. Okay, so, so what it, it is like, uh, if, if she's talking about the white spots, so is, is it something serious, like uh, we should first apply the remedy or we should first visit the dentist? Well, I would always clean out what I could. Mm -hmm. Salt, water, and gauze is absolutely harmless. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that those white spots are not being removed, mm -hmm. and if they're not going away, I would go to the dentist right away. Those spots could mean an infection. Those spots could mean, uh, those, the infection I'm talking about yeah. is mostly fungal in nature. Okay. So we want to avoid it, any it chances. Comes with any pain or something? It could lead to inflammation in the mouth, mm -hmm. and it could spread to the throat if it is an infection. Okay. So diagnosis is key here. Yeah. If uh, keeping the mouth clean can um, prevent those white uh, spots from forming, mm -hmm. that would be ideal. But if they are recurrent spots, which is not normal, then please go visit the dentist. Okay. So uh, next is, what to use as my child has bad oral smell? Encourage your child to brush their teeth <laughs> twice a day. Yeah, and maybe have your child to stick their tongue out, maybe, maybe brush their tongue, make it yeah. fun. You can do it in a funny way, just so the child learns that brushing the tongue is also part of cleaning yeah, your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and keeping the tongue clean is extremely important in maintaining fresh breath. Yeah. Okay. Next is, um, my son is six years old, he always got mouth sores. Any solution? How often is your child brushing? And uh, does he have any history of any other systemic diseases? Mm -hmm. Or does the child get frequently sick? Or is your child drinking enough water? Okay. Right? Hydration is also extremely important, be it for adults, be it for children. Okay, oral hygiene as well. In oral hygiene, it's extremely important okay. because uh, we need saliva in our mouth. It's like a natural buffer for the yeah. mouth. It keeps the uh, acidic uh, condition of the mouth lower. Mm -hmm. It reduces the acidity in the mouth. So we usually get ulcers if we have some digestive issue, if we are dehydrated, mm -hmm. or if the child has any traumatic bite, if his okay. teeth are biting in a wrong pattern which is causing the tongue or the cheek to come in the bite. Okay. So again, you need to have this diagnosed. And I would start with obviously hydrating my child and uh, making sure that the child drinks a lot of water mm -hmm. and is eating the right amounts of foods, right? Yeah. And ulcers can be um, 
an indicator for many things. Mm -hmm. So again, visiting the dentist is extremely important after figuring out why, if it's not happening in the first place, if it's not being corrected in the first place, please visit your dentist. But usually there's a link between ulcers and lack of hydration, as I have noticed in my experience. Okay. Uh, is a scaling recommended for kids? At low level, yes, if your child is not maintaining their oral hygiene, and if there is too much calculus built up for the child, then you must get a professional cleaning done. Obviously, that can be a little disturbing for a child due to the sound of an ultrasonic scalar tip. It vibrates really fast and it makes a very sharp sound. The same as a dental drill. So kids tend to get afraid of that. So you want to make sure that you avoid calculus build up in the first place, which is by brushing your child's teeth and getting them to brush every single day, twice a day. Okay, so does this scaling uh, no, decrease the pain? No, it doesn't. It only displaces deposits on top of the teeth okay. and stains and calculus. Yeah. So, so it, it has nothing to do with like it, it doesn't change or shifts the position of the ego. No, it does not. That's a common myth. Yeah, because some someone, some people have really this thing in mind. Okay, scaling. We should not do scaling because teeth get weakened or they move from their places or something like the that. The reason the teeth tend to become temporarily mobile mm -hmm. after a scaling or an ultrasonic scaling treatment is because you've had too much calculus building up over a prolonged period of time. That causes gum recession, that causes bone recession. They both go together. When you have gum and bone recession, your teeth become weak. That calculus is forming a collar around each tooth. Once you remove that collar, the teeth are free of that okay. deposit. But for some time, they're going to feel mobile. Okay. But removing that calculus is of extreme importance to allow those, gum, those gums to heal back onto the teeth. Right? and to prevent further destruction of bone structure underneath. Eventually, those teeth can become so weak that they cannot be saved, mm -hmm. and they eventually may need to be taken out if the gum disease progresses to periodontal disease, which is involving the bone yeah. as well. So scaling, when you have a lot of calculus and daughter, is extremely important okay. to so maintain after your teeth scaling, integrity. Uh, so after scaling, when they, you say that they become temporarily mobile, right? So uh, how much time does it take to form or to, uh, to like, uh, in their position? It can take a few weeks, but it greatly varies and depends on how the patient is cooperating after the treatment. It's not just you get scaling done and you're done. Okay. You need to follow a very strict oral hygiene regimen. The dentist will recommend medicated mouthwash, medicated gels. You'll be flossing, you'll be brushing daily. It's an entire process of healing. It's just like having a surgery. After surgery, we're always on medications. We're always on post-operative care. We clean a wound if we have a, an injury. So the same thing about after having scaling and uh, periodontal therapy done, that you need to maintain your oral hygiene and follow the dentist's instructions so that your gums are able to heal and come back to their original, original position. But it can take a few weeks and it greatly varies again on the patient's cooperation also and their systemic condition also. Okay. Okay, next is, um, my daughter is one year old. Her one of the front tooth is broken. What to do? Well, if you can, please get an x-ray done of that tooth to see how large that fracture is. If the tooth is not changing color, if the tooth is not getting infected, and if the tooth looks absolutely healthy in its place, it's perfectly fine to just have it rebuilt uh, with a white filling until the tooth falls out itself at the age of seven. And if it is infected or if it has an exposure of the nerve, then please do visit the dentist so that they can treat that tooth so that it can stay in its position until it is supposed to fall out at the right time. Okay. Okay, so I have uh, these questions uh, enough for today. So I think uh, it was really nice and it was a great experience with you. And we, with your experience, we get to know a lot about oral hygiene. Any short tip or last tip that you want to give to the parents about the kids uh, for oral hygiene or something that they have to be on check necessary on a daily basis or anything like that? So in my experience, I have met a lot of parents in dental hospitals who have been very bad with their own oral hygiene and so it reflects onto their children's oral hygiene. Parents need to be aware of their own, own oral hygiene as well because whatever they do reflects on what their kids do. They need to reinforce their children for positive assurance uh, regarding oral hygiene, make toothbrushing fun, tell them the consequences of not brushing well, make sure they do it daily. You need to supervise your kids. If you're going to complain about your kids having too many sweets and toffees, maybe you need to stop providing it for them in the first place. Try to incorporate healthy habits. Give them fresh fruits, add some honey to it, add healthy sugars to their food so that they can enjoy the sweetness 
and healthiness of their food, rather than having chocolate and cookies, which is really not helpful for them. <clears throat> and it's a party for the bacteria in the mouth, to be honest. So we want to really, really reinforce oral hygiene tips for kids at a very young age. Maybe when you're brushing your teeth, take your child with you in the bathroom, brush your teeth with the baby. Babies have a habit of wanting to hold and grab everything the mom does. So if you're doing this in front of your child, maybe the baby will see it's something good, it's something that's supposed to be done every day. They'll take it as a good duty and a good duty. Yeah. It's a duty to themselves, right? Yeah. So it would be great if parents start at a very young age with their kids um, to keep their teeth clean. And also, when it's, if they do, God forbid, have a dental problem, don't scare them against the dentist, please. Because kids come to us and they're terrified to sit on the dental chair only because parents have a habit of scaring kids against dentists. What they say is, dentist injection That's not a very good thing to say, right? You don't want to scare a child again against an injection or the dentist or the white coat. You want the child to be uh, open to visiting the dentist and open to visiting the doctor so that they want to be healthy, they want to be uh, smiling happily and not have any bad experiences with a dentist. Because when you have dental trauma and dental fear from a young age, it does progress into adulthood. And even people who are over 50, 40, still have dental fears and dental anxiety because of one bad dental visit in the past. So you want to ensure that you're going to the right dentist and that um, your dentist has given enough reassurance to that child to be confident to sit on that dental chair as well. And you, are, at your end, as parents, can always help your kids to have a positive image of good oral hygiene and good dentistry, visiting good doctors from the start. Thank you so much, Dr. Vivian Nasir, for being with us and for helping the audience of Bachar Party and the mothers there, especially who are really, really worried about the oral hygiene of their kids. I hope all the questions that you have asked have been answered by Dr. Alina Nasir. And if we have missed someone, we really apologize for that. We will take it in the next session. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.